Hello everybody, it's Antti here. In the past you have been watching the Test Guru TV and today it's going to be called the Beyond Testing Show. Here we are experimenting on a new studio. This is located in Kampi, Helsinki. And uh, today we have a guest, guest, and his name is Sami Söderblom. In uh, Sami Söderblom's career, uh, he's been working as a testing coach, a highly regarded keynote speaker, and also as a head of uh, test and QA functions in a like incredibly big organization employing 40,000 people. So I want to welcome you, Sami. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Antti. That's awesome. Great to have you here. So um, what are you up to at the moment in your career and in software testing? Well, <laughs> thanks for asking. Well, quite a lot, actually. We just uh, started a company last November uh, and uh, it's be been keeping me quite busy at the moment. And uh, as you well know, you first have your day-to-day -day activities and then you start running a business. So it can be uh, around the clock uh, uh, sport, I can <laughs> if imagine. you will, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, uh, it's quite exciting. Yeah. Uh, all the all the problems uh, that we have are created by us Ourself. alone. Yeah, and we can fix them. And uh, basically, every time you start a, a startup, uh, there's an endless uh, potential. So that's uh, quite uh, encouraging uh, thought. Mm -hmm. So wow. That's awesome. Uh, so for the audience in the Test Guru TV, in the past we have addressed your questions in the show with the guest. And today we will do the same as well. But before we go there, I want to ask you something. Because like you went from a very high like position in, in a corporation yeah. to becoming an entrepreneur. So how did you make that decision? What was it about entrepreneurship that like really caught you there? I think the pivotal point was uh, when, when my... Uh, uh, co-founder uh, Marku, uh, we met uh, somewhere a little over a year ago. Uh, he presented the the idea, and I was uh, I was uh, at that point I was uh, just meeting a sleazy salesman or <laughs> something. But uh, then he mentioned uh, Futurize, yeah, uh, that uh, that they are actually incubating this uh, mm -hmm. idea, and uh, they need uh, a quality focused company in their ecosystem. Mm. And uh, I've had uh, awesome experiences working with uh, Futurize before, and they are quite highly regarded in, in Finnish uh, digital landscape. So I, I immediately noticed that this is quite unique and a unique opportunity to do something, not just by myself or with Marku, but as a part of a bigger ecosystem. And mm. uh, all, the, all the, the ball is in our court, so to speak. And... Uh, yeah, that's yeah. quite a shift, like yeah, on the point of view of where the like the business in software testing comes from. Yeah, yeah, and uh, uh, I'm uh, quite uh, quite a fan of the saying that uh, the only things we regret the most are things we didn't do. Wow. So uh, I I wanted to grasp this opportunity, and we live only once. That so you did it now. So yeah, yeah I want to welcome you to the like the group of entrepreneurs in software testing that's that's awesome thank you yeah but let's go into the audience question now are you ready for it no but let's go yeah yeah <laughs> that's that's the whole point of the game here in the show <laughs> yeah. we're never ready for the questions yeah. um so just to quickly check the question is about how will test automation affect the role and responsibilities of testers in the future well uh this is a crystal ball question yeah yeah, yeah. but we already are seeing signs where it's heading Mm -hmm. Because uh, testing quite uh, widely has uh, moved into automation mm -hmm. because of the need in the customer end that mm -hmm. automate all the things. And they what have... is it about automation that like sparks interest in the need? You know, well, in people who are in the customer organizations. Uh, usually, when when talking with the business and customers about this, uh, it's about all about productivity. Yeah. Because they, they have, uh, for instance, uh, people who are running companies at the moment, CEOs, owners, and so on, they talk about three things. They talk about AI, mm -hmm. they talk about sustainability and productivity. And the productivity part uh, drives them into automating all the things. Mm. Uh, and uh, we are then uh, 
quite foolishly, if I may say so, uh, going into that uh, trap. Yeah. As drinking the like, automation Kool Aid. Drinking the automation Kool Aid, and and uh, but the because everyone is doing it saturated, uh, and testers who are actually awesome at testing mm. go into territory where developers are actually better at it mm -hmm. than testers. That's true. So the future, because developers are doing more and more testing, more and more automation as a part of their own workflow. Mm -hmm. What is our place in that equation That's if true. they are already doing it? Mm -hmm. So are we uh, shooting us ourselves in the leg while doing it? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I also because like I've also been meeting a lot of like people uh, in in like I would say three thousand and five hundred people in one to one discussions yeah. about what makes software awesome and you know how to how to make software testing that like really works. Yeah. Uh, like I guess in the past ten years. So that's quite a lot of meetings, and I've noticed this automation Kool Aid yeah. <laughs> as well. Um, and I actually call it the Kool Aid because, like, it's it's actually like it's not always the solve thing that would solve the problems of an organization, yeah. but in the end, the people who manage the organization they want to have the productivity in inside so they can measure and and they can like optimize. Yeah. And and automation is like seems like a low hanging fruit, in in that that sense. Yeah. Um. And and the the productivity discussion is it's really interesting to me. Um. And and when we go deeper into it, um, it's actually fun when when we think about automation uh, as a function because. In automation, you always end up establishing another development like uh, line of work. Yeah. You have the real development uh, of of that real product, and then you have a side development project of the automation. Yeah. <laughs> so it always like not not necessarily doubles the effort, but it 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 it, it, it at least increases the effort like significantly. Yeah. And every time when you make changes in either one you got to make changes in the other as well. Absolutely. And that's that's the thing that like most people don't like think about when they think about productivity and like automating sh shit, you know. And and <laughs> and that's that's curious to me. Why why don't people think about that? I don't know because uh it's uh often uh IT mm. in general is considered uh, something that comes from the outlet. Mm. Like uh I don't care about those. It's just uh, zeros and ones and so on. But inside of it, uh, for instance, when you are uh, developing code, uh, it uh, well done. It's uh, it has all these coding conventions, and uh, developers are actually quite uh, pragmatic at it, really good at it. Uh, but often automation is just uh, something that is glued over, like it's like a patch. Mm. And uh, there's a script there, and there's a script there. There's no like uh, discipline in that, I in the same way as usually in coding. Mm. So uh, it may even be that the automation is actually taking more time and effort, money, blood, sweat, and tears mm. to develop and maintain than the actual code. Mm. So if we want to go into that Kool Aid, then we actually we are losing in productivity mm, that's if that's true. done not done smartly uh fun fact uh, when i've been approaching customers or they have been approaching me uh it's usually because i challenge this mm. idea uh nine out of ten companies offer yes yes you get all the automation and tools and everything but there's one <laughs> that challenges and that's uh, that's slowly becoming our like a uh, trademark, trademark yeah. or yeah, yeah, like even. But offering. I also do the same, so it cannot be the trademark then. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, but we're that, the two out of ten. Then. <laughs> yeah, two out of ten. And uh, but that market is not saturated. Yeah, there's room. There's room for companies like Prove, like mm. Clarify, mm. like Hidden Trail. Mm, that's true. Like uh, companies that do things a bit differently and uh, better. Yeah. So um thinking about like looking into the future we like no, now we were looking a bit into the like the hindsight yeah. um looking into the future so so what what happens what will happen to the role and responsibilities of testers due to t uh, test automation in the future so 
Well, test automation as a separate entity, mm. it's, it's often like uh, speaking about carpenters mm. that would focus only on using hammer. Yeah. And uh, I would uh, I would propose to testers, if they want to be relevant in the future and bring value, to put, keep automation in their toolbox because it's needed everywhere, all the time. We need tools. But... Uh, start focusing on more on the providing value via the testing itself and uh, beyond implementation. Yeah. That that would be, uh, or they could become de developers, but it's starting to get saturated also. Developers don't get jobs that easy anymore because there's an AI and uh, it's fluctuating a lot. So testers need to think about that if they want to be, uh, automators, or they if they want to be developers, which might be, well, not replaced, but a lot of that work is being done automatically already. So my crystal ball is hazy, yeah. but I have some idea on where things are going. Yeah. So. so if we were to give advice to the viewers here, so so like, <laughs> who are we to advise anybody? But, but any, anyways, if we were to give some things of value to the viewers as well, um, so what 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 should they start doing and focusing on more? Uh, one of the things that I heard you say is that that everybody should have like an increasing amount of like uh, ability in test automation, at least in a sense that they can have an educated conversation about automation and yeah, yeah. does it make sense or not for the, the, like the employer or the client. Yeah. So, um, so just like getting educated about automation in a sense that you can have like this high level conversation and bring some insight and value through the means of conversation. Yeah. Then, uh, the second thing that I heard you say in other words was, um, was that that you also should have a bit of understanding how automation like is created, how you script tests and stuff like that, uh, so that you can use it as like the, um, this is a Finnish word, I'm not sure how to say it, but it's keppihevonen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you can like uh, piggyback yourself into the organization where you can actually then start making your like influencing the organization for, for the better outside of the automation as well. So because automation is in high demand, you can piggyback yourself into organizations who need it yeah. to make a positive impact in all areas of testing. Yeah. So those were like, like few things that I, I heard you say. I'm not sure if you said it, but but <laughs> that's, yeah. what I, that's what I, I believed I heard. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm never against automation. I'm I'm yeah. not against tools. I don't want to hit uh, nails with my hand. Uh, but uh, doing things smartly and not using that as your only uh, only approach. Mm. Because if you are, uh, you said that you you uh, when you have uh, good automation skills, you can get uh, that long low hanging fruit, and you can get a job at the moment. Mm. But in those organizations, uh, others know how to automate also, especially developers. So in the long run, where do they need you anymore? Mm -hmm. Should you have something else also than just automation? And if you know about testing, providing value beyond implementation, uh, having a sense on, on the business side, uh, and also different variations on, on automation also, not just uh, automating the test scripts, but the utilizing those skills in building platforms, mm -hmm. uh, pr producing production code and so on. So try to find places to be valuable, not, not mm -hmm. these caricatures of being automator or tester and so on. Mm. And uh, I would say that uh, versatility uh, provides you better chances on making up uh, making in the future than yeah. than just being a one trick pony yeah and, and that's like from from if if you, if you look at it from the angle of an individual testing professional yeah. um uh, the, the versatility i think it somehow to me um it boils down uh to actually scheduling versatility into your calendar because like most people in testing they just tend to be like like these wheels on this industrial assembly line you know yeah. um and and the whole schedule is filled with that yeah. like operating work 
yeah. but like needing to become the owner of your skill set and and that needs some time in your schedules and I, I remember you doing one keynote where you actually was was sharing like like how you divide your time between like learning and and making new things and actually uh, delivering value and and how it all mixes up and and I'm not sure if I'm lying but you said something like like 40% in learning bucket of your time allocation in testing yeah so that was something out of my recollection you can correct me if I'm wrong but but that was a big deal yeah yeah and uh, yeah uh but then again I I don't divide it in a way that I would spend time learning and doing and but both happen at the same time yeah so I'm of course learning I'm learning at right now yeah so <laughs> in this awesome studio like speaking about testing to people who are watching here so like yeah. making sense of testing in words yeah that's actually a high level skill set yeah yeah, yeah. and Glad uh, to have you here thanks <laughs> uh, but yeah uh accumulating skills that are relevant that you can be helpful valuable to the organization and the situations change uh Especially when running a business, uh, you, at some point you have to code your website, and so, at some point you have to uh, manage funds and uh, profitability stuff and the recruitment and and be useful. Mm. That's my, that's my only advice. Figuring more ways, figuring out more ways to be more useful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's I, I think that leans towards the future. Um, for the audience here, uh, you got to stay tuned for the future episode as well when Sami is here because we will be talking about how AI will be impacting all of this. And I, I feel like we're already teasing that uh, topic here. Uh, so, so I, I hope that we get to answer that question as well in, uh, as well in the future episodes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, do you feel like we have covered? this test automation i feel like i'm speeding here i'm so excited <laughs> so slow-mo speeding here on the video so anyways um do you feel like we have covered the topic of test automation and, and looking into the future somehow i think we could talk about this uh, all night yeah all day so so but uh yeah in general like uh regarding the future what 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 role automation plays in that you have to know tools mm. you consider yourself a carpenter yeah and you have tools that's all it, there is to it and learn new tools uh see world around you mm. see past the code editor and the console mm. and try to be valuable and useful yeah that's dedicate time for learning learn about tools yeah uh, learn about uh, having an educated conversation about automation yeah and just like uh, figuring out ways to be of more value in e other areas because automation and 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 those like very detailed scripting stuff won't be there forever as as a job for us to do. Yeah, yeah. and that's an AI discussion later on. <laughs> but, but we have to go there soon. Yeah. So I'm. Um, I, I feel like we have covered the topic. Yeah. Pretty solid. Same, um, same. For the audience, if you feel like we have covered the topic or if we forgot to answer any questions you may have, please don't hesitate to post them into the comments as well. And also remember to subscribe to the channel. Um, so um, I feel like we're done so we can check on the camera there and, and wave the audience goodbyes for now and stay tuned for the next episode. Bye. Bye.